We're back now with Alice Cooper and reading about the things that I said you have done on stage in your lifetime. Those sound bizarre to old Tom. You know, Tom sits here with a glass of water and talks to people, and that's kind of the I act. I some bizarre shows on this. What, it was the Sterling Hayden show was bizarre. You thought bizarre? Yes, I thought so. Oh, bizarre of the mind, yes. though, not bizarre of the physicality. What is the strangest or weirdest illusion or effect uh, that you've ever done on stage? Well, uh, that's hard to say because a lot of things are, are imagined by the audience. Um, it's like a surrealist, surrealistic kind of approach. Well, did, there was a story, remember, when you killed the chicken, but you really didn't kill the chicken. Well, you know, it, there's 90% of, of my whole thing is, 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 you know, the legend is uh, rumors. I just decided not to deny any of them. You know, because some of them are very creative. <laughs> and, yeah, but tell me you didn't kill the chicken. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Sanders kills chickens. I mean, you know. <laughs> uh, no, I, it was, um, I don't really remember. Alice might have done that, but, you know, I, I don't think I did. <laughs> the, thing, the thing about that is... What, what, is Alice somebody else? Oh, yeah, well, Alice, you know, is, is the, the character that performs, really. You know, and, uh, and then who are you? Oh, I'm just, you know... I'd be nothing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know I, just, I just sit around being very, very normal, you know. Uh -huh. But then that, that promotes the, the character. That promotes the character. The more normal I get in my regular life, the more bizarre Alice gets. And so, like, they feed off each other. Now, what about the time Alice had his head chopped off? Oh, yeah, that was fun. I think we have my some, mom hated that one. I think we have some videotape, and maybe we can roll that, and uh, you, people can watch it. And uh, I don't know if you want to give away the illusion here as to what happened. No, uh, I died every night. It was... Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, here it goes. you got to be kidding. you got to be kidding. Bye, Alice. <laughs> My kids. <laughs> all, the, all the parents went, yeah! <laughs> I mean, you got to kind of feel for a second like if they're cheering the blade coming I down, know. what do they think of me for it? Well, well, the thing is, is like, Alice is like a catharsis up there, you know? He's like, uh, there's, we have very few fights in our audience. You know, because it's like actually saw Clockwork Orange. Nobody wanted to go out and fight after that because they did it for you on the, on the, on the film. Mm -hmm. And so, like, we, we use violence. Because it's sensationalism, and I love sensationalism. You know, I think that that's, that's the whole basis of my show. I would much rather pick up uh, a, mag a magazine, a name with magazine, that says, Boy Born with Dog's Head, rather than, you know, Reagan does it, da 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 you know, because that's more sensational, you know. Uh, more people would go to an airplane wreck than a circus, just because that's the way that, that, that uh, human nature is, you know. And so, like, what I do is I just give them images. I throw images. There's a snake out. If I throw the snake out there and bring yeah, it out no, there, you will, you'll take it sexually, maybe. She'll take it funny. She'll take it serious. So that's one. If I throw a crutch out there, they'll, by the end of the show, you have 20 different images. You'll walk away with a whole different story than she will. Mm -hmm. So I'm making you use your imagination. Uh, they told me backstage, the producers, that you wanted to come out here with a snake. Tonight. Yes, they did. And I, 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 I move. I get a little. <laughs> oh. I get a little uneasy around snakes, which is stupid. I know. It's no, a they're, dumb they're, thing to they're do. really nice. If you, you know, you feed them. We feed this one. <laughs> yeah, so like you know, people, two or three yeah. groupies a week. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one. This one is really. I mean, she's no stage. A Angel, her name is Angel. You know, she she lives in Beverly Hills now. You know, and uh, she won't eat rats. She's mink. You know, she's not rats. What's rats? And she knows. She actually knows when she's on stage. You bring her out there and her ego comes out. So, uh, Do you think all the people that go to watch you perform uh, in the spectacular stage shows that you do have the foggiest notion that you, Alice Cooper, live in a house in Beverly Hills, California, next door to Barry Goldwater Jr., and are a very quiet, meek, mild-mannered singer with a major metropolitan newspaper? I'm, I'm a model citizen. <laughs> no, it's... It, the thing is that, again, I love the idea of playing the two images against each other because people still don't have any idea. You know, why did I go on Hollywood Square? You know, I mean, well, why did you? Well, think of it. Because the, the same lady that's winning a car won't let her kids go to my show. You know, and I thought that was a really bizarre sort of, uh, you know, just putting me into that, to that thing, plugging me in was a really pop art kind of statement, you know. Uh, you know you're a legend when you're a question on Gambit. You know? Yes. <laughs> you know, if you sit there sitting in the morning watching, I like I love quiz shows, and, you know, because I know I'm smarter than those people. And I sit there and I watch, and I'm watching them, and he said, who is Vincent Fernier? You know? Who is Alice Cooper? Cooper? Right. You know, I said, there, whatever, and the lady knows. But she's poor, whatever you know. happened to good old Vince Fernier back there on the trail? What, what happened to him? Oh, he's still around. Yeah? You know? He was pretty, 
He was fun and everything like that. I know, I, I'm still Vince. A lot of times, I'm Vince. I look like Vince to you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vince. No, I was always a... But Alice, the character Alice was needed. He's a real need. Because the stage needs to be used. And it, it needs to be... Uh, uh, take, you know, they say called it gimmicks. That was a bad word. They used to say, oh, Alice is gimmicks. Mm -hmm. and that. Well, sure, what's wrong with gimmicks? As long as the music backs it up. If it were just gimmicks with no music, then it would just be, a, you know, a farce. You know, anybody can go out and buy, buy props. So that 13-foot Cyclops... But if you haven't got the music to back it, why it's there, you know, then it's, you know. There's a quote attributed to Frank Zappa way back there on the trail somewhere when you were playing a small place in Los Angeles early on in your career. Every place in Los Angeles. Where apparently the customers left. Oh, yeah. And Zappa said any band that can empty out a club that fast <laughs> yeah. must have something going for it. Even the hippies what, hated it. Yeah, was, was that a true quote, though? <laughs> oh, sure. Well, that was a true fact. It was a hip thing to do, like, in about 1969 to walk out on Alice Cooper. You know, well, we used to play the Cheetah Club. If you remember the Cheetah out on mm -hmm. Navy Street, mm -hmm. they'd play hold six thousand people, and we'd go on in two minutes. They'd be gone. <laughs> you know, there'd be three people out there. We'd say, "Wow, new record tonight." But the thing was, is the fact that it was like 1968. Remember, and people were still doing this, and and they were still, "Oh, gee, everything's wonderful." And we weren't like, you know, that's the last thing we stood for. We stood for, some, you know, fun. And so we'd go out there, and I said, "What does it matter? We haven't got anything to lose. Go out there with Alice Cooper, of course." You know, they're going to expect a blonde folk singer, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and they got, you know, they got it, which was totally... And we, like I said, even the hippies hated us. We had no friends at all. And that was, that was the... If you can take that much energy, and it was a good show, it was, it was so powerful that they hated to see, think that that was the future, you know. And we liked it. We said, listen, it's just fun, you know. But then how did you turn it around? Did you did, did did you tailor it more to them, or did they come around to you and realize that uh, while there were a lot of quote gimmicks end of quote going on, there was some solid music backing up that that well uh, even uh, even uh, if, yeah well, even at the time at the time you know we didn't even have enough money to buy gimmicks so we, anything we could find backstage was was part of the show you know find a mop oh that'll work right you know? hey get a chicken get uh, a yeah chicken, anything right. that they would throw on stage really was was a was a, a gimmick because nobody did anything at that period everybody played a guitar solo for fourteen hours you know. And, Oh, that's great. You know, that's wonderful. But this thing showed them. It was, it was a flash. It was, an, it was an American sort of vehicle. We were talking about the 22 TVs. I pick up almost all my... my let, me, let me tell you something, Alice. i got to do these commercials. Now, listen here, Alice. We will, uh, we will continue with Alice Cooper uh, with more conversation and more music right after these announcements. Have you ever wanted to get up on stage and sing a quiet song to match your quiet life? Oh, I do ballads. Sure, I do. There's one song called Dead Babies that we did. It was a... I don't mean... I... <laughs> it was a sweet song. I don't mean was... that one. I was thinking more like... Uh... I like Burt Backrack. I mean, yeah, 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 elevator music is the yeah, I, I, I like I like, you know, things... Any, anybody that puts time into anything. Like, I can't stand it when they knock movies. They killed the choir boys. You know, every... I like that movie. And I, I thought um, Myra Breckenridge was good, too. You know? Because, you know, I mean, there was something good about it. Now, what are they murder movies like that that, you know, and sing with, sing with music, you know? Uh, it's just the fact that anybody that puts time into anything, I, I appreciate, you know, even if it's awful. We're just talking about Green Acres was a great show. <laughs> Honestly, you know, if you thought about it in the right, Gilligan's Island was a great show. Oh, come on. Well, the, I mean, he, just the theme song, you know. <laughs> pretty bizarre. <laughs> Frank Duvall, I remember. And now here with the theme song from Gilligan's Island. <laughs> if I want to entertain my wife, you know, I just sing, uh, da dun da 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 Stop it, I'll do anything. <laughs> 22 television sets you have in your house. Yes, what yeah. can you possibly watch on 22? There aren't that many channels. Well, we have, you know, you have cable now. You can watch things from Toledo, you know, if you want to. You can watch cooking shows from Akron. And, and I just really like, I like the fact that it's all moving. And, it's, and it, at the same time, all those people are stars. They go home and, you know, yeah, I have my own cooking show. You know, and so they're probably, right. that's, you know, but the, the thing is, like, you can catch things out of context. School's Out, this one School's Out was our biggest hit, you know. That came out of a Bowery Boys movie. You, you know, you're watching and sort of listening, and, and Sa uh, Muggsy said to Satch, hey, school's out, he's with his hat. So what he meant was wise up in that you know, context. And, I went, and that struck me. I went, oh, that's, what a great way to say that. Now, I wasn't listening to the rest of the movie, but I caught that. Mm -hmm. you 